In this tutorial we're going to create a simple race game. I've already deleted the cat sprite and I'm looking at the stage. The first thing that I'm going to do with my stage is to, to paint a background. Let's just use the arrow here to make the, the stage a little bigger. I'm going to use the fill tool and I'm going to fill in a nice simple green for the grass. And I'm going to choose the brush tool. And I'm going to choose a nice big chunky pen and draw myself a racetrack children to navigate to get through to the end. The final thing I'm going to draw, let's choose a filled rectangle, make sure it's not too big, is a finish line. And the finish line is quite important because I need a way to check to see if the, um, the children have got their sprite right to the end. Okay, nice simple racetrack. Again, if you're looking for some challenge with this, you could get children to, to put things like oil slicks in a slightly different colour, or you could actually have multiple backdrops with a, an introduction screen, the main racetrack screen, and then perhaps a trophy that's shown at the end. So I've got my um, my backdrop. Now what I'm going to do is get myself, I'll just close that one, make that one a little smaller, is get myself a new sprite. And I'm going to choose one from the library, although children could draw their own. Um, for instance, um, they could draw their own race cars or whatever it is that they want to do. Um, I think I'll go for a horse. Now, really importantly, when we first put the horse on, we've got to shrink it down because it's got to be a good chunk smaller than the width of the road because we, we want the horse to be able to successfully navigate all of the way around. And let's just put him at the start for now and let's start putting some script, scripts on our horse. Now, when the green flag is clicked, the first thing that I want to do, if he's unsuccessfully completed the game previously, I want to put the horse back to the start. So if I go to if I go to the go to x and y coordinates, it's automatically put the correct coordinates minus two o five one one six, which is just this bit up here, which is wonderful. Um, I also want some controls, sorry, some events now when the the keys are clicked. So again, let's put the up arrow when the up arrow is clicked. We could do it moving towards the mouse. Um, but I'm actually going to do it using keyboard controls. So it's up, move 10 steps. Um, while I'm here, I'm just going to make sure the sprites are irritating left and right. Let's see if that's working so far. Yeah, up the horse goes. Let's just click the green flag. It's back to the start. Let's duplicate and change it from up to down. I'm pointing direction down. And let's duplicate this one. So he's pointing left, and then let's duplicate it one more final time, for right, let's make him point right, okay, green flag, horse running around, wonderful. Now what I want to do is put in a check now to see if he's touching the green grass, and if he touches the green grass, what I'm going to do is be really mean and say, something like, oh no, back to the start for you, or something similar. So, let's just move down a little bit over here. Again, we could do, in fact, we could do it at the top one up here. We want to basically repeat this forever, because if we just check once, then, let's just move that over there for the moment, because we're not going to use those again. They're all set up, hopefully, and working okay. Um, forever, I want to check to see if it's touching the um, the colour and if I click on the colour here I get the picker option so I can say if it's touching the green which is the colour of the grass here um, then I'm going to display that message and here we go and let's just drag it over from the left so if it's touching the colour green then what I want it to do say something like oh no back to the start and it's going to do that for two seconds and then what I'm going to do then is actually let's um, duplicate so I've got that statement here I'm going to put it back to the start using the go to X Y let's see how this works okay I'm successfully navigating the course but if I touch the edge, oh no, back to the start, he's back to the edge. And I've had a two-second time penalty there, having to wait. And 
if I touch, oh no, back to the start. Now I'm actually going to duplicate that whole set of commands there and put them in underneath. And this time I'm actually going to choose the black. And if he touches the black, instead of saying, oh no, back to the start, I'm going to say, well done. In two seconds. Um, and back to the start. And let's see what happens. Can I get all the way to the end? Now this is a really simple game and it lends itself really well to introducing variables to children because what we could then put on is for instance a timer how quickly can the timer can the race course be completed well done and back to the start and we could also do um, if we go back to our sprites here we could actually duplicate the horse and have our other horse actually we could perhaps change the sprites or the start position here and actually change the keyboard control so rather than using the up down left and right arrow keys we're using some different keys and then we've actually got a, a two player game and just to, to introduce the um, the variables um, for you for now I'm going to choose the data option and I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to call this um, P1 for player 1 score um, I've got a choice of global for all sprites or local for this sprite only. I'm going to leave it global just for now. So player one score is zero. And I might have to re, if I want my score to be displayed, I might actually have to change the map a little bit. The other thing we want to just adjust is if it touches the black, then we want to change the score by one. That's changing player one score by one if we get to the end. And what we should do at the beginning, by the way, is set the score to zero. So let's see how it works. It's only one player at the moment, my my um, game. But if I do get all the way to the end, here we go, nearly there. Well done. And player one score has gone up by one. So you can imagine if this is a two-player game, we could have the player two score underneath, and it'd be a bit more competitive.